Hello, 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 everybody. This is Beth Wearsdale, author, and I'm here for Writer's Rock today with the absolutely fabulous Marlena Frank. Hi, Marlena. Hi. <laughs> I'm so happy to be here today. You look so fabulous. And I've got to say, I absolutely love that artwork you've got behind you. Oh, I, I, can't, I can't stop glancing at it. It's beautiful. <laughs> and it and it, it, it frames you as well, which is absolutely it's fantastic it's actually one my my aunt did um it's from i think uh university of alabama in birmingham is what she based it off of one of the buildings they have there that's so, amazing yeah, she's, she's just been doing art for decades now <laughs> that's obviously why i was attracted to it because i love to do mm -hmm. double in a bit painting myself that's awesome and, and i am i'm sure you're the same i'm one of those people that i when i see a piece of art not only can i appreciate the beauty but i can appreciate the work that's gone into it Yes. yes. You know what I mean? Even the simple ones. That it, there's a lot of work that goes into that. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I'm just going to, Marlena, I'm just going to quickly share us to the Writers Rock group. Yes, I can see us. We are live. Yay. So bear with me one second. I am quickly going to, I'm getting quite efficient. So that's that one done. Post. There we go. I, I'm getting quite good at this. It's, um, I'm actually surprising myself, to be honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I have to do this way because otherwise they won't realise that we've gone. Yeah, gone live. There we go. That's to that one. And luckily, Wanda, who's the Reuters Rock founder, she's absolutely fabulous, and um, she's just made me an ab admin. Oh, that's of awesome. The of the, I was already an admin of the Writers Rock group, obviously because I post and help a lot of people. Yeah, um, yeah. But she did it on the readers group now as well. So, and she works nights, bless her. Oh wow! So That's she, rough. yeah, she has to try and sleep during the day, and if she slightly goes over, then it doesn't go through quick enough. Yeah. But we're live, we're good. <laughs> we're all sorted. Oh, I. Do you know what I'm? I, I'm so thrilled to be talking with you today, Marlena, because multi-genre authors absolutely fascinate me. Really? I think Yes, I think you're so talented because, you know, for those viewers who, who haven't met you yet, you primarily do young adult, don't you? Mm-hmm, mm -hmm. right now, yeah. <laughs> you do fantasy and horror. Yeah, yeah. So I, I I get easily distracted by other ideas and stuff. I like having like um, the fantasy because it's a bit more like I can keep it kind of more contained. And then I also like having the horror where I can just get really you know darker with things. And and yeah. then if I get too like tired of the horror, I can go back into the fantasy and vice versa. You know, so I can kind of get into different mindsets depending on what I'm working on. It, it's absolutely amazing. Now. How on earth did you get into doing both genres? I mean, did that, did that start from quite a young age? Well, I've been writing professionally since about 2010. Um, I've been mostly writing short stories, and I really started pushing myself with writing horror because um, fantasy, you have to do a lot of world building, which I find kind of hard to fit into a, a short story format. But horror, you can usually do in kind of more bite-sized chunks. And so that's kind of what I started getting into more and more. And um, then from there, I, I finally got the confidence to branch out and do a whole, you know, um, like portal fantasy where you're pretty much building a, a whole world from the ground up from there. So um, just kind of horror was more accessible for me. And then yeah. I moved into kind of larger and larger worlds and, and more elaborate characters and all that. It's, it's amazing, isn't it? I, I tell you, the... the the way our creative brains work never ceases to amaze me. I know, right? <laughs> Honestly, and you're right. Just as you're doing one thing and jotting one story down, you've got ideas popping in your head from yep. another character saying, woo look at me, look at me. <laughs> no, no, I'm going to finish this first. <laughs> <laughs> now, are you a big fantasy and horror reader? Um, I grew up reading mostly fantasy. Um, all the, all the, you well, most of the classics and things like that are really what you know got me into it. Um, I started to really love fantasy whenever the Lord of the Rings series came out. That was like huge for me. Um, and then I started getting into horror more um, as I was starting to write, and I started to realize I, 
I'd always been kind of like steered away from the horror books and things because horror movies, like some of them I just can't watch. But yeah. then like horror books for me are so much easier to like kind of get into, you know what I mean? Without having that, the visuals and stuff like that. I'm crafting them in my head and I can put the book aside, you know what I mean? In a movie, you're like, you can't really give yourself a break from the tension, so. <laughs> Do you know, I, I know exactly, I mean, I've always been a massive horror fan myself. Mm -hmm. and. I used to love watching horror movies, yeah. love them. I mean, I was a horror movie addict. If there was a new one that was coming out, I desperately wanted to see it. Unfortunately, my husband's not a horror fan. Yeah, yeah. So, so I would try and watch a movie with him or make him watch, shall I say, make uh -huh. him watch a horror movie with me. <laughs> but he would actually pay more attention to the music. Yeah. As soon as the music started, because I'm, I'm engrossed in the movie, I'm not even noticing the music. Yeah, music. yeah. I'm, you know, zoomed in on what's happening. My husband's paying attention to the dun, dun, uh -huh. music building. And then all of a sudden, just before something would happen, he would grab my leg or grab my arm. <laughs> oh my God, it's a miracle I never had a heart attack. <laughs> I swear to you. And, and we've been, to, well, we've been together 30 years now. Lucky Aww, man. That's awesome. He's a lucky man. Um, <laughs> But I, I haven't been able to watch a horror movie for years. It's I think it's like I like the um the gothic kind of horror and yeah. and like the creature horror movies. Oh, I love creature horror films like werewolf films and, oh, yeah. and things like that. But some of some of the more like torture stuff, I'm like, oh, I can't, I can't. Um, Saw movies were hard for me, you know that that sort of thing. I have I have like levels. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I know the exactly. more intellectual stuff like um um all of the like Midsommar and things like that are, are really like artistic and fascinating though yeah, so yeah. I think you're seeing like a shift in horror from from you know one type to the movies like Get Out and things like that lately which I've really enjoyed I, I absolutely agree with you I think there's been quite a big shift overall hasn't there in books and movies yeah um, I mean, there's been there's been a few movies that came out and books that were just so awful in their shocking shock factor mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so graphic. I think it turned a lot of people off. Yeah, yeah. For, for a very very long time, but we, we're all getting back on track. Um, yeah. and we've got some we've got some comments already. Look, oh. here's the the lovely Carla. Hello, oh, Carla. Hello, <laughs> my darling. And and she commented as well on the horror. Let me see. She said, this is true. I used to love watching horror movies when I was a kid. As an adult, no. And Bag of Bones by Stephen King scared the hell out of me. Do you know what? I, I agree with that. That was quite a... Yep. Yep. I, 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 <laughs> I'm a massive Stephen King fan. That's oh, me too. Stephen King and James Herbert are the two authors that got me back into reading as a teenager because I went oh, through a stage where I just lost interest. I, I grew out of the genres I was reading as a child, felt a bit lost, and then my friend introduced me to my friend Zoe. Hi, Zoe! Um, to Stephen King and James Herbert, and then I was hooked. Yep. yep. Now... What's what are your favorite books from when you were younger that have really helped and influenced you? Do you think as a as an author now? Well, I was reading books from a very young as a very young child. I think I was like four or five when I was reading Charlotte's Web, and I was um, that 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 book really stuck with me. You know, um, and I was I my nephew recently got it as a Christmas gift, and I picked it up and I was reading the first page, and I was like oh my gosh, this book is so deep just on the first page. And I can't believe I was reading this. <laughs> it's so dark, you know, like first page is like, like she's like, you know, arguing to keep a, a, a small runt pig alive. And yeah. it's like, man. <laughs> yeah. So I think I, I read a lot of books like that. Um, you know, Where the Red Ferns Grow, um, all of those kind of uh Little House in the Prairie books, things like that. I read so much of that whenever I was a kid. I couldn't, I couldn't get enough books to 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 read. <laughs> oh, I, I was I was exactly the same. I was exactly the same. And um, the nice thing for for me as an adult and a, as a mum is that now my children will recommend books. So oh. my, yeah, my eldest son because I like to read young adult and adult books. Yeah, yeah. 
and I think a lot of us do nowadays, but not not everybody wants to confess and admit it. <laughs> you know, but, right? I know, but I love young adult fiction. I really yes. do. And he introduced me to um, Darren Shan. Oh. Um, one of his books got turned into a movie, actually. Um, oh, my gosh. The Van Va Vampire's Assistant. Oh, I think I've, I've, I remember hearing about that. Yeah, That's but he's awesome. got a whole series of books about the Demonata, which are very gory and graphic, and I absolutely devoured them. That's I awesome. Think, now. Yeah, uh, and I and I, luckily I had a library just down the road from me, so I, within two days I was going back for another one. That's amazing. <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> well, we've got some more comments. We're going to get them on here. We've got, hi, Kelly. Thank you hi, for joining hi. us, darling. She says, I love horror. I've gotten more into it than ever over the years. Good for you. But you'd have to let us know, Kelly, is that more movies or books or a bit of both? <laughs> we would love to know. Oh, Carla says, the imposter in Link by Link is so good. Thank you, Carla. She's oh, so sweet. She's <laughs> so awesome. So while, while she's mentioned it, just so all of our viewers know, We've both taken part in um, a fantastic anthology called Link by Link. Um, I don't even see my eyes are watering really bad. Um, and um, for those those who call aren't my last interview, they know a bit more about it. But uh, it's a collection, isn't it, of, is it 11, 11 in total? I think so. I think, I think it's 11. So. Carla can correct us. Yeah, she'll um, write us. I believe it's 11 ho holiday stories that's mm -hmm. going to be published in December and they're from middle grade right up to adult. So there's literally a story there for every single family member. Which is a fantastic range. I, I love that. It's because it's, it's you can have horror at all sorts of levels. You can have like feel good, you know, Christmassy levels and stuff like that. Like whatever you're interested in, it's in there. <laughs> uh, absolutely. Absolutely. Now what inspired your story for the anthology? What gave you the inspiration? Oh, um, I read a story. Um, it was a, a while back. It was about, it was a horror story um, about a woman who was, you know, being preyed upon by an entity while she was in an elderly home. And I wanted to give more of my take on something like that. Um, and, uh, it ended up getting very weird and very dark, and uh, I was very pleased with that. <laughs> I kind of let the story figure out where it was going to go. Um, yeah. I wrote the entire story by hand. Just uh, I, I helped my sister out of her art shows, so we were having one of those quiet days. So I was like, okay, I'm just going to work on my journal on, and, and, and figure out where this story is going to go next and kind of let it just go where it wanted to. It was it was a lot of fun. It's It's dark. <laughs> I, I think it's absolutely amazing, and and I I don't know whether you're normally a panster or, or a planner. Um, I have to just let it flow every single yeah. time because I otherwise I just get stuck in a rut. Yeah, and and I I like to let the characters decide what happens. Um, and sometimes I feel like an outline can kind of you know cubby hold them in a bit too much. Um, I usually will start with an outline or I might end with an outline, you know, yeah. if I need help kind of structuring the ending. But I don't typically like to have it throughout the whole novel or the whole story just because I feel too too boxed in. <laughs> yeah, I, I know exactly <laughs> what you mean. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. And I, and I think it's important, especially for the authors that are watching, um, to remember that there is no right or wrong way, is there, to write a book. It's it's so individual yeah, yeah. And, and what works for one person I mean I know I've got author friends who are real strong planners that literally yep. go chapter to chapter to chapter and and then I've got other author friends who are like me and they just I call it winging it but you yeah. just let it flow yeah. and, and as yeah. you said let your characters lead the way basically and, and you kind of let the story, you know, depending on where you are in it, determines how you're going to handle it. You know, when yeah. I was doing world building, like in the Stolen series, I, I, you know, one of the things that I've learned just by doing research on this stuff over the years is one of some advice I got was, you know, don't describe the whole world before you write it. 
describe the parts of the world as you need it. You know, like you think of a map lighting up in places and then you're like, yeah. okay, well, let me go ahead and figure out the details of this culture and this society and this area here. And I found like that was easier because I wasn't so overwhelmed. Yeah. <laughs> And I yeah. could actually get to writing instead of spending years trying to to do the world building, which I've heard of so many, you know, fantasy authors getting kind of bogged down by that, where they just do world building so much they they can't ever feel like it's it's ready to get into the writing. So yeah, yeah, it, it it's crazy, isn't it? But I mean, I'm sure I'm sure you feel the same every week, month, and year. It's just one constant learning curve, isn't it? Always, always, especially as an author, because, you know, you're always figuring out new things, whether it's historical or whether you're trying to figure out, you know, for a particular horror story or or a new character that you're trying to kind of sort out. Like it's it's a process. It's always yeah. a process. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I couldn't agree with you more. Let's have some more comments. OK. Oh, we got a series on. Hello, darling. She says, Hi. I love horror. But they, but they do too good of a job scaring us now. <laughs> I agree. I agree, especially when the books get made into movies. Yeah, because they have such amazing special effects now. So the the stuff that we write on paper, they can actually create. I know. I know. I was like, mm. I could handle it when it was in my head. You know. <laughs> I absolutely love it. That's a very, very good point. A very good point. Um, another comment from Kelly. She says, oh, yeah, Charlotte's Web is just so good, but also incredibly good at handling adult issues for children. Yeah. I absolutely agree with that as well. That is I really, really true. That is really true. And it's hard to yeah. find books all the time that, that do that, you know, that, that, that frame things in a way for kids that are more really difficult topics, but, you know, making it accessible. Yeah. And also, I think it's it's such an incredible book as well, because it hooks you as a child. But then, as you said, when you reread it as an adult, you see so much more in the book. Mm -hmm. You've got that maturity. Yeah. And it's it's just a, a, an amazing book. I'm, I'm not surprised. It's still such a good seller. Yeah. Uh, as a child, you're like, well, this is great. Simplistic terms. And as an adult, you're like, wow, the complexity on this first page, it looks simple, but it's so much work. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, Kelly says, oh, vampire's assistant. There we go. Oh, she knows yeah. which one I'm talking about. <laughs> the movie was actually very good. Oh, That's awesome. That's awesome. I don't think it quite did the, the book justice. Yeah. But they don't that's, always. That's make. how it goes. It's a different medium. It's a different yeah. medium. Yeah. <laughs> the Green Mile by Stephen King, that movie did oh. spot on to the book. Oh, Absolutely man. Spot on. Oh, Carla says, you're welcome. Oh, She's thank so you. Awesome. She's so awesome. Um, Kelly says, all horror, just literally all of it. Ara, Asta, and Jordan Peele have been blueing. Oh, blowing my mind lately <laughs> um also the incredible indie films and books oh yeah yeah oh kelly you might have to um recommend some later on in the comments for us to check out that'd be cool um oh carla says read best adorable story after the imposter so you can sleep <laughs> <laughs> yeah i noticed beth that we're like at opposite ends of the book and i was like <laughs> <laughs> Mine's all cozy and lovey dovey and all sweet uh -huh. and, and light. And you're just staring my hell. Right. <laughs> right. It's great. But, but as we said, there is a story there for every age group, isn't there? Precisely. Precisely. Yeah. Whatever mood you're in, too. Exactly. Exactly. I agree. Um, Carla also says it does have an 11 stories and over 500 pages. Ooh. So it's going to be. An absolute phenomenal book. I'll tell I you. Know, I'm, I know. I'm, I'm so excited for you. Um, we've got another. Oh, there we go. Kelly says, that's me. Too much world building. <laughs> so she agrees with you. She's a slave to the old world building as well. Um, <laughs> Carla says, I write out what needs to happen in the book and then write away, uh, letting the characters take charge. I, I like that, Carla. Yeah, I, I did try and do that, I must admit, with book two, and um, my characters were having none of it. 
It's like hurting cats sometimes. Yeah, they were, they were like, no, we're not doing that. Um, <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry. Now, I know you've always had a fascination with monsters and mm -hmm. things that go bump in the night. Where does your inspiration come from for, for your characters? I mean, do you do you have weird dreams or do you see an animal and think, oh, that would make a fantastic... <laughs> sorry, sorry, dog alert, dog alert. <laughs> They're telling somebody off outside. Girl, no, lay down. You can tell his boss, can't you? you? <laughs> like, really? <laughs> so, so what inspires your monsters and your creatures? Well, for the seeking, um, I actually there's a scene in the seeking I actually had dreamed about, and that kind of I I ended up having to kind of expand that out from there to figure out okay who is this character and why is she in this very strange situation? Um, I really wanted to convey the abstractness of of yeah. the dream in that scene as well, um, and I hopefully you know pulled it off. But um, but yeah, that was that was kind of the kernel of that st whole novel was was from a, a, a dream that I ended up, I got to the point where I started like waking up from like nightmares or disturbing dreams and just writing it all down. Cause I'd be like, I can get something out of this later. <laughs> but, but like for the stolen series, like that was, I wrote a, a prompt on it, like, you know, years back. Um, it was like a picture prompt. It was kind of like Alice in Wonderland themed. And I thought of a, a stone lion helping a girl through a garden area and um, I went and tried to revisit that later and was like, I bet I could turn, you know, shift this around completely and turn this into a, you know, whole novel. And now it's turned into a trilogy. So <laughs> it's just amazing. I, I tell you that your, your creativity is astounding. Now, oh. The Sea King, you released this year, didn't you, in yeah. April? That one's going to come out October 27th. I so beg your pardon. That's the young that's adult right. horror novel. That's right. Broken, 22nd of April. Uh, it, it's it's just phenomenal, and I'm so excited for you with, with Thank you know you. everything that's coming out and what you, what you've already done so far this year. It's just I know it's <laughs> absolutely amazing. Um, now, when I looked at you as a reader uh, on Goodreads and everything, you know you've you've got so many books out. You've you've yeah. done anthologies as well. Do you seek opportunities for anthologies? Obviously, because this. We've got authors watching as well, and they're you know yeah. we've got some yeah. very new authors. Um, or do you find that because your other books, you know, you're actively promoting them, you get invited to do anthologies? How has it all worked for you? Well, I think it's kind of a mixture for me. Um, I I have like one story I submitted. Um, you know, I found I do a lot of like publisher research on Duotrope. Um, I use that as a kind of a way to keep track of my short stories and figuring out, okay, who have I sent those to before and, and who, do, who can I send them to upcoming? Um, yeah. But um, like I have a short story I submitted to one. It didn't get in last year, but they're like, well, we'd like to consider it for next year. So can we hold on to it? And I was like, okay. So it's kind of in the ether at the moment, you know, can't say anything about it because it <laughs> doesn't really have a status, you know. Um, but then sometimes I'll get invited to anthologies. Uh, I've got Masks over here, which is also another Fie Vert um, anthology I was in that came out earlier this year, too. Um, it, it's a fantastic anthology. And I absolutely, as soon as I saw the cover, I fell in love. It's 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 a really good book, uh, just all based on on Mardi Gras and, you know, ghosts and all that sort of fun things. Um, but I was invited to that. And um, I, I was I was so thrilled because I that was the first time I'd been invited to do an anthology before. And um, I really enjoy writing short stories. And, yeah. you know, when I get these invitations, it kind of allows me to be creative with a prompt which I, I really enjoy. And I don't know what the prompt's going to be ahead of time. You know, it's just like, hey, here's a prompt. And if you want to join us, here's the deadline. We need stuff. And I'm like, perfect. I can do this. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, I think it's absolutely fantastic. And you're right. I, I mean, it's when I got invited to do Link by Link, I'd only ever self-published before that. Yeah. I learned so much. I mean, Carla yeah. and Candice and Megan, Everybody from Fear Vert were absolutely fantastic. Oh, absolutely. Because um, I, I, you know, I've self-published two books, learning to do everything myself. It's hard. 
But when I actually got the chance to do something with a publishing house, oh, I was terrified. <laughs> I didn't know what to expect. But it's so amazing too, because you're not just doing it all on your own, you know, you've got people to support you and they're such an organized yeah, yeah. and and nice team to work with. And it's it's just, it's great. It's wonderful when you have like people to, to help you out along the way. And I, I, I self-published um, a novella back in 2012 and it's, you know, still out there, but like that was a lot of work and it's, it's yeah, hard yeah. to put it together. It's hard to market it. It's hard to do all the parts and pieces for it. You know, that's, that's, it's a lot of work. And then whenever you go from that to an anthology with a small press, it's like, oh, wow, <laughs> there's it's other really, options here. <laughs> yeah, and, and, I, and, I did, and I don't know about you, but I, I've learned so much you know, about the editing process. Yes. Um, Carla, she, she uh, gave me some, um, some tips in the, in the comments on my short story for the link by link. And it was something really simple. And she said, change this word. So it's, at, it's actually active. Yeah. Yeah. It's actually happening. And I thought, am I, and it, and it was such a little thing, but it blew my mind. Yeah. You know, just changing one word to a more active word completely changed the whole paragraph exactly exactly i had i had one portion in um the imposter where i come out and say the imposter in the story and i'd cross that out and they were like no keep that in there and own it and i was like okay <laughs> <laughs> you're right i should <laughs> it's, it's amazing isn't it because um you know seeing it seeing your work through somebody else's eyes who, it's amazing. who who is ultra professional and so experienced yes you learn so much from it don't you it's it's amazing i we, we've got some more comments so i'm going to quickly have a look um oh I, oh dear i nearly deleted that then hi allison <laughs> this is allison my, my one of my longest friends from uh, i say longest she's not like tall but we've been friends <laughs> for oh my gosh must be like 35, 40 years. That's amazing. I oh, love it. I, I suddenly feel really old, Alison. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome, though. That's awesome. She's amazing. She's absolutely amazing. And she's um, she's one of those that she's just got an absolute heart of gold. Um, and she says, hey, guys, keep up the fab work. Thank you, Aww. darling. I hope she checks out your books as well, Marlena, because I think she'll absolutely love them. I think she'll devour them. Oh, Wanda. Hi, Wanda. Wanda's joined us. Hi. She's my boss lady from Writer's Rock. Aww. <laughs> um, oh, late Mark Mitardi was setting up spots for virtual summer series. I tell you, she is like a machine. She never stops. I know. I, I, she's amazing. I, I, gosh, she was, she was commenting on people's posts earlier for that. I saw. I was like, I man. That's a lot of work. <laughs> never stops. Like I, I know, bless her. She is the most amazing lady, and I'm so blessed to have her in my life. And we we've become such good friends. And I don't know how many people know this, but she actually works full time in ICU. She's a oh, she's very God. highly qualified nurse. And I don't know how she fits everything in. <laughs> so much respect for you, Wanda. So much. Oh, she's amazing. I love her. Oh, Carla says, we loved working with both of you and we will invite you both again. Oh, You're so sweet, Carla. Oh, she makes, she makes my heart happy. She really <laughs> does. She's so lovely. And we got a message from Kelly. She says, self-publishing is pretty intimidating, to be honest. Yeah. I is. think it really is, isn't it? Um, as you it's, said. It's, that it's empowering, but it's also daunting. It's yeah. wonderful to have the choices, but then you also have the yeah. choices. <laughs> yeah, absolutely and 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 it is a case because you you were absolutely right marlena there's so many areas when you self-publish that you have to consider mm -hmm. you know creating your book mar marketing sales Formatting, cover all that stuff yeah it. <laughs> it is and, and i'm just about to release book three and i have to say there is and i'm sure you felt the same thank you darling <laughs> there is no better feeling than having your book released and then sitting back and going <sighs> it is a wonderful feeling it's great and then then, then slowly it's like oh no now people are reading it <laughs> I know. Do you know oh no i hope they like it <laughs> <laughs> now now 
you've written your you've written a, a, a series yourself mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um and i don't know how you felt but when i was when i was getting ready to publish my book too i was terrified i'm thinking oh my gosh what if it isn't as good as book one i'm gonna i feel like i'm competing against myself i yeah, know and now I've been even worse because, you know, I've got book three of my trilogy just about to, to come out. And I'm even more terrified that I'm going to bomb. Did you feel the same way when you no. were doing your series? You know, whenever I, I have the books here, so I'm just going to show them. But whenever oh, I wrote please this, do. Um, whenever I wrote this, you know, mostly I was trying to make a uh, really creative and and fantastic story. But then when I got to the sequel, I was like, oh, no, now I have to you know, make it better than the last. And that's hard to do, you know, and, and then I wrote Broken and that came out in April and I just turned in the um, first draft, well, not the first draft, the edited, you know, draft to my, to my, you know, publishing group for uh, Parliament House Press, which is amazing uh, for book three. And I'm like, oh boy, I hope people are happy with it. I hope it's a good ending. Oh God, you know, that's how that goes though with writing is that you, you're competing with yourself almost, you know, and you're your worst critic. What? What? <laughs> you're always your worst, like you gotta hold yourself up to this high bar, which isn't always fair to you, you know, like, but but that's how you always see your own work. You know, you're always like, okay, we've got it. We've got to keep it up here. It's gotta be good. <laughs> it, it's true. It's true. I, 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 I think what well, doesn't help is that there have been very famous authors who have done hugely successful series, yeah. book series, and the fans have been so disappointed with the final book. I know. I know. You just don't want to be that person, do you? I know, right? Because right? then it's going to taint the rest of your, of your books, right? So you're like, okay, well, I've got to keep it high bar, but you also are like, oh, it's got to, you've got to, you've, you want to have a satisfying conclusion, but yeah. you don't want to like, you don't want to have it where it's like, you know, oh, I woke up and it was all a dream or rocks fall, you know, that kind of thing. You, you don't want to like do the, the you know, the, the soap opera kind of. <laughs> no, it's such a fine line, isn't it? It's such a fine line. Um, I'm going to check out the comments again, but okay. before I do, could you please hold up your books again? Okay. Because they're absolutely beautiful. I love the covers. They are absolutely stunning. I know. And I really like how Broken looks like you're walking through the chambers of a heart, like different yeah, heart yeah. chambers. And I think that's really like, it gets really at the, the, the heart of the book, so to speak. They're just <laughs> fantastic. And, and where are they available? They're available on Amazon, I know. Yes, they're available. Um, you can get them from directly from parliamenthousepress.com. They've got their own store there. Um, Shane Layton, who owns Parliament House, she does all the covers for them. They're fantastic. Um, um, Amazon, Barnes & Noble, pretty much everywhere. It's fantastic. I, 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 I can't wait to get stuck in. And now I'm finally getting, now I'm finally finished with book three. I can actually have a a break and do some reading. <laughs> it's like that was the best part for me whenever I finally finished and pushed off book three. I was like, oh, I'm gonna read for a bit, enjoy other people's work. <laughs> I've got, my my TBR pile is getting bigger and bigger yes. by the day, and 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 I'm sure you know what it's like when you're so busy. And I said this last week when you are so busy and you got so much going on, when you do have free time, you can either write mm -hmm. or read yep yep and and you're like friends need you and family want to chat with you and you've got all you got to do house cleaning and stuff and you're just like but that eats into my reading time <laughs> or my writing time you know it's yeah. it's it's a constant struggle being an author is constantly like balancing everything else out with 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 writing <laughs> being an author <laughs> oh, you couldn't have said it to the <laughs> Okay, we've got some more comments, so let's have a look. Um, oh, 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 there we go. Bear with me. Oh, <laughs> so Alison says, love you, babe. Stop telling people how old we are. <laughs> <laughs> Getting called out over there. <laughs> I don't know why she's worried. She doesn't even look like she's changed. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm like, if we was next to each other, she'd look like my baby sister. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> 
stunning. Okay, next comment. Oh, Connie. Hi, Connie. She says, we are really enjoying the interview. Oh, thank you, Aww. darling. Thank you. We, we both appreciate that. Um, Charmaine Frank. Charmaine says she's watching with us. Oh, that's awesome. That is wonderful. Um, <laughs> Kelly says, Kelly, oh, Wanda says, Kelly, don't say it. I get nervous with that dang manuscript. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Wanda is just about to, uh, sorry, my eyes are streaming from this hay fever. You're fine. Wanda is just about to publish her second children's book. And uh, I know, and they're fantastic. And our first one's already got a load of five-star reviews. So, Oh, that's so cool. Congrats, yeah. Wanda. She's doing fantastic. She's leading by example. Um, Alison says, Beth, you have gone from strength to strength. Oh, Aww. Alison was one of my test readers. And when she messaged me after she read it, I was like, oh, thank God. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's always how it goes the first time. <laughs> uh, Wanda says something about sitting down and knowing everything had to be perfect. Yep. Yeah. 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 That's the thing, isn't well, it? As close to perfect as you can get. <laughs> yeah, we are, as you said, we're so tough on ourselves. Uh, Carla says, oh, my God, yes, I'm working on Zealot book two now. Oh, only, yes. Only six more to write after this. Look at those oh. horror faces at the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Good luck, Carla. I, I, know that, I know that feeling. I know how that <laughs> is. It's rough. <laughs> she's, she's amazing, though. She's another. She's another she really lady. Is. I don't know yeah. how she's able to balance everything. I know. I, people. Like <laughs> writing machines. Um, oh, Wanda says, but Beth is a, the absolute best book coach. Oh, bless her. Oh, that's so sweet. It is. I've I've had the honor of helping her literally from start to finish, oh. and um, it. I, I love seeing other people succeed, and, and she's doing so well. Um, John Frank says, I'm here really enjoying this. Your book is top notch. Oh, thank you. Oh, big fan. I've got to take John, you've got a magnificent mustache, doesn't he? <laughs> it's, cool. it's, a, it's one of those ones you just want to go like that too. I love it. I love, I love it. a good mustache, very manly. <laughs> um, okay, next is Kelly. She says, Sequel books seem like some of the hardest. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think we both agree with that. And Kelly says, you've got this. Aww. Do you know, I, I tell you, we, we've got a fantastic group of, of viewers and authors who are just so supportive. And, and it makes all the difference, doesn't it, Molly? It really does. Because, you know, writing is such a solitary task. Um, you're, you're building worlds. You're building people. You yeah. know, if you're building like the, the the encounters that they have, and you and their character has to evolve over time, and you're just kind of all in your head for most of it. And then, so whenever you can reach out and get support, or get help, or get you know just someone you can bounce ideas off of for things, it helps so much. It does. <laughs> so that what's in your head is actually coming out decent, you know? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I agree, and I think I think having that support mechanism around you with people that are sometimes brutally honest yes can yes. only help i mean because let's face it well you know we don't want smoke being being blown up our asses excuse exactly. me exactly we want honesty and and i'm sure like me you've had comments from people close to you saying i absolutely loved it but uh -huh. I would love to see a bit more gore or I'd love to see yeah. a bit more detail. And and that's important for us, isn't it? Because yeah. I think about you, when I've received comments like that, not only have I made the changes because I value that person's opinion and their ideas, um, but it's also helped me for the following books. Yeah, yeah. Because then I, I learn from that experience, you know, and then I can pick that up and take it to whatever I'm writing next, whether that's a short story, whether that's a novella or a novel, I, I learn from that, like you said, that's it's it's really helpful. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, Carla says she has a TBR country. <laughs> <laughs> that's a big mood, Carla. <laughs> are, we, are we talking like, you know, United States country? Like, <laughs> small country, right, Carla? <laughs> 
She says, I will still buy books, especially my author friends. Oh, I'm exactly the same. I'm exactly the same. I can barely see my bed for my books on, on the pile. Uh, <laughs> Candice, she says, I love Marlena. Hi, Candice. Oh, You're so she sweet. Is, she is so awesome. I had such a good time with her last, uh, last time. Um, Carla says, what is balance? Can I buy it at Target? <laughs> I don't know. I think they're probably all sold out of it if they do carry it. <laughs> <laughs> we might have to find out. I'm just going to reach over and grab a napkin because my eyes are streaming. You're fine. I look like I'm crying. Hang on. Hang on. You're fine. There we go. Look. Oh, so I've got a little posh now and just dab my eyes. We have so much allergies here, so you're fine. You're uh, fine. Do you know what? It. Just, a, just a personal thing. I never used to have hay fever at all. Oh. Never. My sisters did, but I didn't. They change then, every few years. Your allergies change at what? Every ten years or something. I don't know, but I think it was about, do you know what? You could be right, actually, because it was a good few years ago now, maybe seven years ago, and all of a sudden, I thought I had the worst, like, throat infection I've ever had. I mean, the back of my nose and throat was just raw and bleeding, and I thought I had, like, you know, top, like severe tonsillitis, and my nurse friend, she said, are you sure you haven't got allergies? I went, no, no, I haven't got allergies. I've never had allergies. <laughs> She said, "Well, take some, last words. <laughs> yeah, take us some Benadryl, and see what happens." The next day, I was absolutely fine. <laughs> and, yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Then I, I can feel it coming on straight away. How bizarre is that? <laughs> right. Alison says, um, "Oh, Alison says, but you touch so many lives. Oh, bless her. Oh, I love her. I think it's because I, I." With my books, it's all about Earth dying and, and an amazing alien race come and save us. See, it gets you very, very to... appropriate for right now. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Yeah, absolutely. It, it does, definitely, definitely does. Um, Candice says, how long does it take you to create your worlds? Mm, that's a that's, good one. That's a good question, Candice. Um, so it really depends on the world itself like the stolen series that entire world is is created and that took me i'd say about two to three years to kind of finalize the world building aspects of that i actually wrote stolen completely in one draft and then i ended up not liking any of it and ended up rewriting it cutting well, out characters and cutting out whole like the way the the system worked and everything how the garden worked and everything um, and then rewrote it, and, and and that's what I ended up, you know, submitting to Parliament House um, because I I had done so much world building, but I was like, no, I don't like where this came, what this, you know, turned into. So I'm going to, you know, fix some of this, <laughs> retcon some of this, and then try again. Now the bits that you took out and the, and the bits that you didn't like, do you have a place where you store all the bits you cut out? For yeah. Reference. So I, I have, um, I use Scrivener or Scrivener, I think is what it's called. Yeah. yeah. Um, and basically every time I do a draft, I go through each scene and do a backup. So I can go back for years to where my very first drafts were and see exactly what I wrote for that. And my Scrivener file actually has all three books in it. So I can go through any of my books and verify, okay, what did I say there? <laughs> How did I spell that? Let me let me just double check. <laughs> and it really helps because I've got all of my reference material for all the worlds and all the creatures in it and where they come from, um, all in, in their in their research resource area. So I can just easily go down there and, and double check, okay, that's what that word means and what that's what that came from and, and all of that. So it's it's a it's it's helps so much. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's fantastic and i must admit i do the same i don't use scrivener but i do do the same thing i i keep um you know files about the characters and everything yeah. else and it does help and i must admit when i get chance i think i'm going to try the scrivener app because i've heard nothing but good reports about it yeah i know it's not the easiest yeah app to to get to grips with but I have been repeatedly told that if you stick with it and you learn how it works, it is so beneficial. I mean, would I, you agree with that? Yeah, I actually put together a video tutorial series on YouTube for it. 
um, on the Windows version at least, and and oh. kind of walk through some of the basic pieces and how I do, you know, highlighting on the binder and how I organize my books and things like that. Um, it has helped me immensely in keeping organized with you know the the size of the world in the Stolen series especially. That's that's fantastic. Could Marlena, could you do me a favor, darling? Sorry, I'm having a hot flush. Um, would you be able oh, no. it's always a menopause, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm fine one minute and then I'm like, oh I'm not <laughs> messing next. Um, would you possibly be willing to share your your YouTube videos about Scrivener sure, sure. in the comments for, for our authors to uh, there's no rush, you don't have to do it now. Okay. But, I can do it after the after the video and I'll do it. Yeah. Then. If you want mind, it's just oh my gosh. Um, it would just be fantastic because, you know, seeing how it's used from another author would mm -hmm. just be so beneficial. That would be absolutely fantastic. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm just going to have a look and see what other comments we got. Oh, this is a good one. So Kelly says, what's one of the weirdest things you've had to research for your writing? Oh, boy. You have to get my bleeper out. That one was tough. Um, I, I so the seeking is pretty gory, um, but I also had to do some research for some of the, uh, you know, characters that end up having tragic endings. Um, oh, I had to I had to do some research on various um, types of critters and things like that, and how they actually attack people and 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 looking up some pretty pretty gross pictures and things like that on the internet hopefully you know i never no one ever finds my internet search history <laughs> that's how that goes but, but you have to have those kind of visuals and you have to look at the the way the creatures work and i actually have sketches that i've i've done of all the monsters that i created for the seeking and i talk about what parts of their body are from what creatures and how they attack and and things like that. There's not that many of them in the seeking, but there are several. So that I had to kind of do a lot of research for that. <laughs> That's just amazing. Now, with your books, do you actually insert your characters and their descriptions and details? Do you actually put any of that in your books at the back, or because um, some, some authors that go to great lengths, don't they? To yeah, they do that information as well. Is that um, something you've done? It's it's something that I um I think I did it for the She Wolf of Can for the She Wolf of Canta that I had. Um, but my publisher requested it. Um, but I do have all that information. I typically don't put it into the appendices or anything like that for my books. But that's an interesting idea. That might be really cool to do like special edition versions where I do have that in the back for yeah. because I, I come up with phrases to help describe a character. So I'll I'll take different quotes that I find for for what they're inspired from and I put that at the top as kind of their their mantra just to kind of describe who they are, you know. Um, and, and that, that's, that's something that I, I try to make up for all of my main characters so that they have something I can go back to and just get into their heads again. That's amazing. That's absolutely amazing. Um, okay. We've got some more. Um, so that was Kelly's comment. Um, oh, Carla says, yes. <laughs> oh, Candice says allergies are bad here too. Oh, she's mm -hmm. feeling my pain right now. Bless her. <laughs> And we've got another comment. Connie, she says, what do you do as an author if you feel your story is drifting away from where you planned and goes in a different direction? I usually let it happen because um, I can pull them back around again um, unless I find that I'm at a part in the story where they need to start coming back around. <laughs> Yeah. And then I'll be like, no, no, we better not go explore that tunnel or whatever, you know. You, you need to you need to stay on the path. <laughs> so so sometimes I'll let them do that, especially if I'm in just the drafting phase. I'll just be like, yeah, sure, let's explore this. And sometimes I might come back and be like, wow, this scene was useless. <laughs> it doesn't add anything to the characters or the plot or it's just talking heads and we're just going to cut that out of there, you know. Um, but sometimes I come out of that and it gives me a lot of insight into the characters and I end up, you know, changing how I view them or how that character views them um, in the storyline. And I, you know, pull back on that and, and, and refer back to that a lot. So 
it is it's amazing it's amazing absolutely amazing now i know you're um an amazon bestseller mm -hmm. which is absolutely fantastic <laughs> thank you after all your hard work how did you feel when that happened i mean obviously because we you know everybody aspires to be a, a, a bestseller yeah how did you feel i was kind of in shock and i was like is this right <laughs> i don't know if these numbers are right am i reading these right you know i actually had to email shane and chantal and be like is this right <laughs> i'm like yes congratulations and i was like Oh, wow, really? <laughs> so I, like, I was skeptical at first because, you know, Amazon sometimes feels like a black box where I'm not always sure what I'm reading is is, is right or or how it comes about. And, and, and I'm always like questioning whether like, oh, I don't know if that's actually the case or not. And they're like, no, that's that's fantastic. Good job. And I'm like, oh, OK, that's <laughs> great. OK, now I can celebrate. <laughs> it's absolutely brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. I tell you, it's, it's lovely when your hard work actually starts visibly paying off and you can yeah. see the benefits, isn't it? It's wonderful. And, you know, I last year I went to a lot of shows and some of the nicest responses I got were from readers who read my book and, you know, emailed me afterwards and were like, hey, I picked up your book at this show and I was having surgery and your book helped me like recover during surgery. Oh. And I was like, Thank you. You know, it's just like, and you can't really, I don't, I never know how to respond to things like that very well. And so I, I, I write my best response back, but it never feels like adequate to express how great it makes me feel to know that my books help people like that. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it's a wonderful feeling, but I don't always know how to handle it. <laughs> yeah, I, I know. I think, I think for, for the majority of us who are very just down to earth and modest, it's very, hard to accept mm -hmm. compliments like that because you know how much it means to them but as yeah. you said it is hard to express it um candace has got another question for you we, we've we've only got a few more minutes so i'll try and get these in uh candace says who is your favorite character that you've written oh my gosh candace you got the good question <laughs> <laughs> i know she does doesn't she she's very good I know. Um, I think Mar is probably one of my favorite characters. Um, he's a real sweet character in the Stolen series. He's a stone lion, but he's also a librarian. Um, and and he's just, he's very, he used to be very lonely. Um, and then he meets, you know, Chalet um, and they have to help each other. He's, he's just a really sweet, um, dedicated and supportive character. All he wants to do is read books to kids in a library. That's literally his goal in life. And he is just such a sweetie. He's he's probably my favorite character I've written. He's he's just so like lovable. And he was actually based off of um, a Twilight Zone episode. I don't know if you've ever seen the one where the guy goes into the vault because he wants to read his books and then they have like a nuclear blast and he comes out. I have seen that. Yeah, yeah. He comes out and he's like, oh boy, I can read all these books and his glasses break. And he's like, that's not fair. No. He's like, but he was, he was, he's like that kind of like, you, he's just, that's all he wants to do is read books oh. to kids. That's his goal in life. <laughs> I love it. And I love your character's names as well. Schley. Is that oh, right? Schley. Yeah. Yes. Oh, it's beautiful. Um, John's, John Frank says, um, so no wandering in the woods for no apparent reason. <laughs> you want more uh, Lord of the Rings wandering. Yeah, yeah. If my characters wander in the woods, I want them to have a, a you know, <laughs> a good reason for it. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. And Candice says that's one of her favourite episodes. Mine too, Candice, mine too. <laughs> you know, we, Candice and I, we, we were talking about the 80s and we were sort of talking about a bit of music and everything last, last, um, last time when I was interviewing her. Yeah. And then... A friend of mine sent me the funniest photograph and it was of llamas that were sort of very short and shaven here, but the rest of their fer fer or whatever had been left. And they oh all looked like they had big 80s hairdos. That's amazing. That's I'm amazing. Gonna, I'm gonna share it on under this video just yes, so you can please have a do. I need to see this. <laughs> 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 Kelly says, oh, she says she loves that episode so much. It too. is so good. It is so good. It's so like it's it's sad, but it's like heartwarming too. Like oh no. 
I tell you, it's amazing, isn't it, how we can all be literally all around the country and the world, and yet we still have so much in common. I know, I know. Like a it's random cool. Twilight Zone episode. Like I know, right? It's mind blowing. Now, before we finish, there's something I wanted to ask you because I'm so intrigued, and my daughter Abby is huge into cosplay and stuff. Oh, that's awesome. H how did you get into cosplay? I mean, I think it's fabulous. Any excuse for me to dress up, and I will. I know, right? I know, right? Well, you know, um, I've always loved Halloween and getting dressed up for that. And um, my sister actually used to cosplay Heath Ledger as the Joker. And she always wanted me to join in. I was like, I don't know who I can really cosplay as. And then we started, um, a few years later, we started cosplaying from Black Butler, um, which is an anime series. And um, we ended up meeting other cosplayers. And then we ended up all deciding to do group cosplays together. And it just, it just kind of goes on from there. Once you start, it's like, it's such a fun experience. You know what I mean? And you, you get to um, kind of go in and, and make your own art you know, your own yeah. interpretation of characters and, and um, you have LARPing to some extent too at the cons and things like that, which is a lot of fun. Um, just 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 being goofy and having a good time and, and getting to look like the character is really fun. It's a lot of fun. I, I, I don't think people are quite, if, you, if people aren't familiar with the cosplay community, <clears throat> it's very easy not to realize how big it is. It's huge, it's, it's huge. Massive. I live, I live near Atlanta, Georgia, and we have normally, obviously, um, cosplay cons um, all the time, all the, just around the year, February, May. Um, we have a giant dragon cons in September, um, just all year round, Comic Con, Atlanta Comic Con's down here. Um, and it's a huge community mm -hmm. and um, all around the world. And there are people who like make livings out of like making cosplay using LED lights and uh, warbler and foam and things like that. It's just, it's incredible to see uh, the amount of creativity that goes into some of these outfits and, and makeup looks and things. It's just, it's like special effects to some extent, you know? So yeah. it's just, it's, it's amazing. Uh, and it's so inclusive. Like, like you go to Atlanta um, to Dragon Con and it's, you, people are like, oh, it's probably just mostly kids. It's like, no, it's mostly adults yeah. out there. And they've been going since the 80s, you know? And, and they're just like, yeah, we cosplay every year. So does, you know, all, all their friends, you know? And yeah. it's just like, there's, it's normal. There's millions of us. <laughs> yeah, huh? yeah, it's just like, yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what my secret goal is, Marlena? What? I cannot wait until somebody actually dresses up as one of my angel characters Oh, that was a cosplay event looking Aww. like one of my angels. That's awesome. That would be the freaking bomb. Now, with your books and your characters, uh -huh. if you could dress up as one of your characters, who would you pick? Well, my, see, I thought about this. <laughs> <laughs> my first, you my first instinct would be like an adorable Mar because I could do like stone makeup and stuff like that and little ears. But then I was like, Madame Clume would be awesome to cosplay as because she's such a jerk. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you, you get an excuse to like glare at people all day. It'd be awesome. <laughs> well, can, can you, when you do, I want photographs, please. Yes, yes. I think that would be yeah. epic. And and let me know if you ever come to LA for an event in the future because I would love to meet you and hang out. Oh, that'd be so cool. That'd be so cool. We could we could build cosplay together. <laughs> that'd be so good. Awesome. I'm a, I'm a cosplay virgin. It would be my See? first time. See? It'd be great. You'd have a blast. You'd be like, why have I not been doing this? <laughs> oh, no, right. And my daughter, Abby, is so into it big time. She'd be like, yes, mum, do it. <laughs> That's awesome. That's amazing. Right, we've got three comments that I can just quickly get in before we finish. Uh, Kelly says, cosplay is something I miss so much this year. Me too. Oh, bless her. And then we've got Bonnie. Hi, Bonnie. Hi, she, Bonnie. Says, she says, I miss seeing you all at... Cons, Kelly Frank and Marlena Frank. Oh, I miss seeing you too, Bonnie. I'm, I seriously need to get involved in all this cosplay. 
Uh, John Frank says, many famous people cosplay so they can mix in with their fans and not be recognized. Yep, yep. I've seen that. I've seen that. It's a really clever way. They wear masks and things, and you don't know you're dealing with an like a famous actor. It's awesome. How cool would that be? It's great. I wonder if Keanu Reeves does cosplay. You'd never know. <laughs> I'm going to have to go to every event just to make sure. <laughs> Carla says we can all hang out together. Yay! Yes. That'd be amazing. Oh, Marlena, thank you so much for an absolutely fantastic interview. You've been a, a pleasure to talk to. Oh, thank you so much, Beth, for putting all this all together and for chatting with me today. It's been such a blast. Thank uh, you so much. You are so welcome. You're absolutely awesome. Um, I believe that I've already shared all your links and details, but if there's mm -hmm. anything I've missed, if you can add them in the comments, Will that would do. be fantastic. Um, for people who weren't able to join us live, because obviously it's a bit of a difficult time for some people, depending on time zones. Yeah. Um, some people will be watching this later on or tomorrow, if, especially if they're in England. Um if you are watching this right now and you want to ask Melina a question, please put it in the comments, but make sure you tag her name so she knows it's there. Yes. Otherwise, she won't see it. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you so much, Marlena. And Marlena's going to put the details about Scrivener in the comments as well. Yes, it will be down there. Thank <laughs> you so much, everybody, for joining and um, please check out Marlena's books on Parliament ha uh, Parliament Press. Fevert is going to have the link by link anthology, and it's going to be again like your books. It's going to be everywhere as well, Barnes and yeah. Noble, Amazon, yeah. everywhere. Um, please check out Marlena's books, and please make sure you leave a review. Please, they help authors so much, guys. Y'all have no idea. <laughs> I know, right? I know, right? Marlena, thank you so much, darling. And I really thank hope you. you will come back and chat with me again soon in the I'm future. I'm looking forward to it. Thank you so you much. Are awesome. Thank you, darling. And thank you, everybody, for watching. Thanks. Bye. Bye.